Hey guys, welcome back to the show. And on this episode, I'm going to be talking about a movie from my favorite decade, the 1990s. The 1990s was an interesting time for movies because, I don't know, maybe this is just me, but I feel like studios were more willing to take chances on new, strange ideas. So you ended up with a lot of these weird movies, especially the low budget ones, that just flew completely under the radar, including this one. Tammy and the T-Rex. This movie stars Denise Richards and Paul Walker. Now, there were a couple movies in the 90s that made me a big fan of Denise Richards, like Starship Troopers and Wild Things, which reminds me I should go watch Wild Things again. Really study it. Now you'll notice something strange at the beginning of this movie. The title card says, Tanny and the Teenage T-Rex, which is obviously not what the movie was released as. But here's the even weirder thing. This movie was originally shot as a horror comedy, but then had all the gore cut out of it in order to be more family friendly, which makes the movie even weirder because now the tone is all over the place. Really, when it comes down to it, this movie it's about love. I mean, sure, this might not be your conventional relationship, not your traditional love story, but that just proves the point that love knows no boundaries. I think we could use more of that in our entertainment, which is why I'm happy to introduce my new show, Mark and the Monogamous Mosquito. It just might be love at first bite. So Denise Richards plays Tammy, a high school cheerleader who has started dating Michael, played by Paul Walker. You shouldn't have done this. I can't accept it. See, back in the 90s, this was a really expensive gift. Due to the great flower shortage of 1993, flowers were worth more than their weight in gold. So, yeah, Mike, this is a really big gift. Of course she can't accept it. Anyways, the real reason that Tammy is worried is that her ex-boyfriend, Billy, is just a maniac. And look, here he is. I'm walking with this lady. What do you think you're doing, man? I'm That's my lady, all right? But Billy, leave you me alone! You stay out of there. Don't you touch me, man. Hey, man, come on! Now, this fight gets pretty violent. It pretty much turns into a pro wrestling match. And Billy's crew are super vicious for some reason. <laughs> Like, what is your problem with Mike? Why do you want Billy to kill him so much? Well, what do you have invested in this? Are you really that dedicated to the leader of your high school crew? If so, I mean, wow, that's loyalty. Imagine being this mad at someone for dating your friend's ex-girlfriend. You'd think that she was the one who dated Tammy. Anyways, Billy resorts to the old ball grab and twist, which by the way, that move is completely gutless made even more so by the fact that the crew is just really cheering this on. Come on, you don't, you don't ball grab and twist. It's just something you don't do. So Mike goes for the same move and this has now gone from a high school shove fest to a dust up, to a backyard wrestling match, to something very awkward and uncomfortable to watch. Anyways, this goes on for a while until the cops finally break it up and Billy starts flipping out saying he's gonna kill Mike. So now we have Dr. Walkenstein and he's got this animatronic T-Rex for some reason. I also don't really understand this crew. I mean, he's got his assistant. Okay, whatever. But then he also has this bodybuilder and this tech guy. I guess I just don't understand. I mean, I have so many questions. Is this guy your bodyguard or something? Why would you need that? And the same for the tech guy. You're, you're a doctor. I mean, I understand you're gonna need him for this project because it's an animatronic T-Rex, but like, what about before that? How did this all come together? We don't really know any of that. The only thing we know is that this guy is obsessed with trying to implant a human brain into this dinosaur robot because, you know, he's a crazy scientist or something. Meanwhile, Tammy calls Mike and is like, hey, sorry, I ran away earlier, which he did after the fight. I forgot to show you, but it's hilarious. It's almost kind of comical. I love when this stuff happens. The best spoof of this type of reaction was in the original scary movie. 
I'm sorry if my complicated life is an inconvenience to your perfect existence. Cindy. Cindy. Anyways, Tammy is like, I just want to be with you right now. And I don't blame Mike for reacting the way he does because this is probably the most exciting moment of this young man's life up to that point. And I would react exactly the same way. So Mike grabs all of his stuff and then of course goes back to grab that one last raggedy ass condom he's got in his tight stand. Which I can't hate on. I mean, it's good that the movie is endorsing safe sex. Um... You know, I'm just going to say it. But if it was me in this situation, if Denise Richards was willing to go without it, there would be no hesitation on my part. To be clear, I'm talking about Denise Richards before Charlie Sheen. So anyways, to avoid being spotted by Tammy's parents, Mike climbs up the side of the house to her bedroom window. And at the same time, it just so happens that Billy's friends are driving by and they decide to call him. Yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Hello? Oh, hi, Dad. Your dad? I'm sorry, I knocked my dictionary over. I'm doing my homework up here. Wait, so her dad just called her on the phone inside the same house? I mean, I guess this could work if she had a separate line, but why even bother? I mean, damn, man, you think <laughs> when I was growing up, you think my parents gave me a separate line for privacy? <laughs> if my dad wanted to talk to me, he'd just yell. And it wasn't, he wouldn't even turn towards my room. No matter where he was in the house, he'd just be like, Mark, get down here. And if five seconds passed and I wasn't wherever he was, it would be, Mark! the house would be so quiet and then there'd just be this yelling of my name. So then Mike gives her a bracelet or something. See, now this is a gift that she can accept. This is much more appropriate than a super expensive flower. And then Billy shows up with his gang and they just rush inside the house. I mean, what kind of a psycho is this? Just runs into someone's house, breaks down the bedroom door. So Mike is able to get a head start and manages to actually outrun the cars for a while until they hit him with the baseball bat. And they all seem to be really enjoying watching this guy getting beaten up. This is pretty vicious. What does the rest of this gang have against this guy? The fact that he's dating Billy's ex-girlfriend? I mean, Jesus, Billy, what kind of a loser are you? She doesn't want to date you. Who cares? Here's a crazy idea. How about you move on with your life and avoid the assault with the deadly weapon charge? So they kidnap Mike and break into the zoo. Again, just adding to the list of charges for the prosecution. And then they leave him to be eaten by lions. See, when I was in high school, my weekends were typically filled with video games, hanging out with friends, you know, pretty typical stuff. And maybe I was just a boring kid, but murder never seemed to come up. So Mike survives being attacked by the lion and is put into the ICU. And this is the weird mixing of tone with this movie. You have this guy who's almost dead, his drunk uncle in the room, and you have this character still making quips and acting silly. And then you have Billy coming in, hitting Tammy, more violence, and it just seems like this takes place in a dimension where no one's reactions are relatable or realistic. Okay, so I guess the doctor looking after Michael calls in the crazy doctor Walkenstein for some reason, and his assistant rigs the heart monitor so that it looks like Michael is dead so that they can remove him from the hospital and take his brain. Again, they keep using this cartoon style comedy in this movie, and it's so weird based on what's actually going on in the scene. It's like, oh crap, he woke up again. Better punch him in the face so that we can continue to cut his skull open and spray blood everywhere. So they hook up the brain to the T-Rex and then take off, leaving the tech guy and the muscle behind to eat pizza, which I'm sure would be so appetizing when you're covered in blood. Then the tech guy starts mocking the T-Rex, so it bites his head off, 
And then the tough guy thinks he can fight the robotic dinosaur. See, this is one of those guys who thinks he can fight anything. Have you ever met one of those guys? You can usually find them late at night being kicked out of a bar and then they'll just start punching the side of a wall or a lamp post or something because they just gotta fight. Well, in this case, the guy is just dumb. So the T-Rex makes short work of him and then goes to a payphone and tries calling Tammy, which is kind of funny. I mean, you can't talk. But Tammy isn't at home. She's out at a party not having fun, which seems like an odd choice going to a party while mourning the death of your boyfriend at the hands of your ex-boyfriend. I would probably be talking to the police about everything that happened. You know, trying to get this guy put away for good since he just murdered your boyfriend. But then again, that wouldn't make for an interesting revenge story and that's why we're all here. You know, one of my favorite things to do when I watch a movie, whenever there's a scene with a lot of extras, just watch the extras. So in this scene, it's a party, people are dancing, and usually in this scenario, while you're filming, you don't have any music actually playing because you want to record clean dialogue. So you just add in the music in post and as an extra, you would just go based on your direction, which would probably be pretend like, you know, you're dancing to music of a certain type, which can turn out kind of funny in scenes like this when they end up putting a slow song in. Yo, Billy, you want to dance? Hey, I'll dance to you, baby. Uh, in your dreams. Oh, a shady lady gets an attitude. Anyways, the T-Rex shows up to the party somehow. And here's the part where, honestly, these are some really lame gore effects here. It doesn't even look close to his guts spilling out of him. He's just holding on to them and dropping them. But for the most part, I have to say that the rest of the gore in this movie is actually really well done, especially considering the budget. The next day, Mike the T-Rex goes to see Tammy. I guess no one else noticed this thing walking down the street in broad daylight and somehow takes her out of her room after she's so scared that she faints. And then Michael manages to communicate to Tammy that his brain is inside of the T-Rex and he's controlling it. Don't even get me started on that whole sequence. So when Tammy makes her way back home, the parents have called the police and they're like, what the hell happened? And just listen to this excuse. What the hell happened here, Tammy? Who did this? I don't know. I think it was just a meteor or something. Yes, a meteor. A meteor came in through the window, messed up my room, threw things everywhere. It was really quite belligerent. And uh, I, I'm also, yeah, I'm pretty sure it, uh, it brought a bag of weed too and hid it somewhere in case you found that. Anyways, the rest of this movie is really them searching for a body to put Michael's brain into. They even go to a morgue and start showing Michael the different bodies in there that he can choose from. When Michael does finally kill the evil doctor, we get probably the worst gore effect of the entire movie. I mean, just look at this. This is supposed to be his body. And I have to say, I actually think that this is worse than the last gore effect I was critical of because, I mean, yeah, they, try, they at least they tried to make it look like it was his body, but at the same time, I think that draws even more attention to just how bad the effect is. So they open fire on the dinosaur and I guess this breaks the robot, but it's okay because Tammy is just going to keep Michael's brain in her room with the camera attached to it so that he can watch her strip for him, which I have to say isn't really that bad of a deal, except, I mean, you can't really do anything, so. She takes off her clothes. Where do you go from there? I think if that was me in that situation, just kill me. Seriously, I would rather that than have blue balls for the rest of my life. But I really gotta hand it to Tammy here. You know, that's, that's true devotion to someone. You know, high school romances come and go all the time. And I mean, Tammy quite clearly would have a lot of options. Now you're probably wondering, how does something like this happen? Where does this idea come from? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, apparently the story goes that someone told the director that they had an animatronic T-Rex and he could make a movie with it, but he'd have to do it in two weeks because after that it was being shipped to Texas. So they quickly wrote and shot this movie and there you go. Movie magic, folks. From a technical side, I could honestly see how you could do this. 
because really you have the dinosaur for two weeks. So really you only need to shoot in those two weeks, the shots of the dinosaur, the rest of the stuff you can shoot, whatever, you can take your time with that. This is one of those cases where the movie didn't come from the story. The movie came from the opportunity to use something in a movie. And in this case, that something was an animatronic dinosaur. So you got to give them credit because they really did make this happen in the blink of an eye. And that's it for this one. As usual, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time. Mark and the Monogamous Mosquito is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Bloody on home! Oh, oh, there you are. Oh, you wouldn't believe the day I had today. Actually, you probably would, because it totally sucked. <laughs>